It's time for Furious Action Gamers Mutant Mayhem! Sweet to home, which roughly translates from Japanese to sweet home, is a 1989 horror movie directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. Yeah, that Kurosawa. Not, not this one, that one. Five members of a TV production crew go into a haunted mansion to find the lost painting of the famous artist Ichiro Mamiya, who suffered greatly after the death of his wife and child. And who could have guessed this? From this stupid movie, there's finally a good game I can actually talk about. Now, from what I understand, someone at Capcom knew somebody on the film's production, and while the game and movie were promoted in parallel and released at pretty much the same time, the movie came first and was the framework for the game's design. The game begins with your five main characters entering the Mamiya Mansion. Kazuo, the producer, his daughter Emi, Akiko, the love interest, Taguchi, the cameraman, and Asuka, the talent. I've tried playing this game a few times over like the past decade and some change. The first five minutes always overwhelmed me. It drops you into a sort of tutorial room in which the entrance is blocked by rubble and the path forward is blocked by broken glass. You have control of one character, Kazuo, and you can walk around and talk to the other members of your team while they'll explain what their uses are. See, each character has a specialty, a specific item that only they can use. Kazuo has a lighter to burn stuff, Emi has a key to unlock simple doors, Akiko can cure status effects, Taguchi has a camera which we'll get into in a minute, and Asuka has a vacuum which can be used to clear obstacles, namely the broken glass. You can switch between any of these five characters, and that's what tripped me up at first, as I would pick one character, venture out, and try and find something for them to do, only to stumble across a barrier that I'd need another character to get past. Yeah, I was dumb. But I mean, what was I gonna do, read the fucking manual? Well, as it turns out, all I had to do was use this team command in the menu. Yeah, so you can get any three characters to team up, and now you have access to all of their items at once. As you explore, you pick up several more items. Some expendable, like planks of wood to make bridges over rotted out sections of floor, or the more permanent upgrades like the mallet, which you can use to break rocks or smash monster spawning mirrors. The game is more or less segmented up into levels, with specific objectives in each one needed to progress. So for example, the first main goal is to turn on the generator to get the lights back on. This has you going back and forth between several of these levels of the mansion solving puzzles to get to the garden finding gas for the generator itself, etc. But it feels less like normal survival horror backtracking, and more like Metroidvania backtracking as key items often have multiple uses in traversal and battle. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, this, this game is an RPG with random turn-based battles. And yeah, I know, while the thought of random battles to some people will send shivers down their spines, these are great. Not only are they extremely fast with great looking animated monsters, each enemy has their own weakness to all the items that you pick up, with some pretty basic logic tied behind it. Like bugs, such as the, the maggots, are weak to fire. Um, bats, who live in total darkness, take extra damage from the flash of Taguchi's camera. It's cool that the items have these uses in puzzle solving and battles, because it puts that much more attention on your inventory management. Each character has their special items, but they also have two inventory slots to pick up the dozens of other key items hidden throughout the mansion. So with a party of three characters, you can basically only hold six items at a time. So maybe you feel like you've exhausted the use of one of these items, taking precious space in your inventory, but you encounter the enemy that's weak to it often. Any kind of dilemma like this lends so much to survival horror. Adding further onto this feeling that you just do not have enough room, the walls of the game system itself closing in on you, you still have two characters left over. The genius of being forced into making asymmetrical parties kicks ass. It's the classic, there's the Fred, Velma, and Daphne team, and then there's Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. And like Shaggy and Scooby-Doo, it's hard not to become endeared 
to your own party compositions. I stuck Asuka and Taguchi together because when you do eventually find these paintings all over the house, Asuka must use her vacuum to clean them and Taguchi has to take a picture of it with his camera, which then reveals either a vital clue to progress or fills you in on some of the backstory of what happened to the Mamiya family. Both of their main uses just work very well together. And so funny to me, uh, the small scenes from the movie that they turn into full game mechanics. If you play this game, you gotta watch the movie afterwards. It's full of things like that. But anyway, it, in a lesser game, this whole party system and item swapping stuff could be an actual nightmare, especially in a Famicom game from 1989. I mean, if this stuff didn't work well, then the game would be shit, but it's perfect. Sweet Home feels like a combination of Dragon Quest, Zelda, and Metroid, and is easily the best Capcom game in the 8-bit generation. No contest.